In this project, I want to create a poster of A4 size in the form that we see here in front of us. So this is for an orchestra uh, that's based in Ireland, and uh, it's for a concert uh, to do with the 200th anniversary of the composer Verdi. Um, so I'm going to move that out of the way, and I'm going to go back to this version of it here, which is just a blank canvas, and I'm going to build up uh, this canvas until I get a poster that was similar to the one that we saw at the beginning. First things first, I need to get a image of Verdi into this canvas. So I've just downloaded one from the Creative Commons on the internet, and I'm just going to pull it in and drag it in here into my image. And as soon as we drag something onto a canvas like this from our desktops, it automatically changes into transform mode, because generally, any time I drag in an image like this, it's generally acceptable that we transform it, that we change the size of it straight away. And the way that I want to transform this image is, I want to increase the size of it until it covers the whole canvas. And so I'm going to go up here, as it's in transform mode, I see all of these different features up here in the toolbar. I'm going to change this link, this maintain aspect ratio, to keep the proportion between the height and the width constant. And then I'll double click into either the width or the height, and I'm going to grow that size with my mouse wheel on my mouse. And so quite quickly we can just view it, see how it looks. Um, and that's pretty good. It's going to take over a large part of my image. As I'm transforming, I can actually move it to one side. And I'm happy with the way that that transform looks and its position at the moment. So I'm just going to press enter on my keyboard to apply that transform. And the transform is applied. In any situation where I've clicked and dragged on an image into a canvas and transformed it straight away in the way that I've just after doing, oftentimes the layer changes into a smart object. And the way that we convert a smart object to a layer is if I just right click over the layer in the layers window and go rasterize layer. That just solved that problem. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to fill in this area in the middle here. Uh, right over to the right of the image, I've left a gap of white. And what I want to do is I want to continue the background pattern that's beside uh, the portrait of Verdi here in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my clone stamp tool and I'm going to pass to the source in this area here and I'm going to draw down the edge. Now the clone stamp tool is a very powerful tool and it's actually dealt with uh, somewhere else in, uh, in a different tutorial but for the moment uh, I'll just quickly do it into that area. Uh, if I had more time I would kind of polish that up a little bit but just for this demonstration it's fine. Now I'm going to start putting my text on on this image and this is a matter of going over to my text tool uh, clicking on it once and then just clicking out onto my canvas. As soon as I click onto a canvas, a new text layer will arrive and I can just start putting on my different pieces of text. Now, with different pieces of text, I'll be choosing different uh, font faces. So when I want to change the font face, I just select the text and move down and find the font face that I want. Uh, in this case, I'm going to look for the font face impact, which is here. Good think lettering. And I'll drag that into place. That's fine. And I'll just put in the next piece of lettering as well. And generally with a poster like this, every time that I want to add in a new piece of text, a new line, I would generally put it onto a new text layer. That just makes it a lot easier to uh, separate the layers apart. And for instance, in this case, I want to change the font face. The branding of this concert is Verdi 200. And so I'm going to go for a slightly different font face. And I'm just going to bring down the size of that text here. Uh, I can see that visually, so that looks good. Pull that into position. And uh, I might want to drag those different uh, pieces of text in together a little bit more. So I'm going to go over to the, uh, uh, the character palette and uh, I will just change the kerning, uh, just especially between that 2 and the 0 there. So that's good. And that'll be fine. Uh, because that text that I'm just after placing, both the Verdi and the 200, that's the concert branding. It's quite an important piece of text in this whole poster project. And so I'd like to make it stand out a little bit more. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add layer styles to each of those different types of texts. And the way that I find my layer styles is just down here at the bottom of the layers window. There's an FX tab. If I click on that and just click on one of the options here, uh, in the case of the uh, 200 text, I'm just going to choose Outer Glow. That opens up a layer style window. Go into Outer Glow and I can kind of change the kind of different spreads, etc. in these different areas. 
You can also change the types of colors that I might want to choose for my outer glow as well. And it just defines the text. If I do it subtly enough, uh, the user won't even notice, uh, but it will just make the text stand out a little bit more uh, than it had been. Uh, and also I'm going to add in a layer style also to this Verdi text as well. And I might just add in some beveling and embossing here. Uh, just a little piece there should be okay. So I'll click OK on that and I get my text styled appropriately. Now I've just added in the concert logo, just those two words, one underneath the other. Now I can tidy that up later on, but I'm going to be adding in lots of text on different areas of the poster, which are all kind of related to one another. But these two pieces of text, Verdi and 200, being the actual brand of the concert, they are a separate section all to themselves. Rather than have 80, 100 different layers of different text that I have to actually scroll up and down the layers window to try and find. Uh, I am just going to add in an actual folder or a group into my layers window and I can find that down the bottom of this layers window with the tool tip if I hover over it saying create a new group. The group goes in there. I'm just going to drag in both of those different texts, the Verdi and the 200 into that group and I'm going to name that group something relevant to do with it. So concert brand is what I'll name it. And that allows me to collapse that group uh, to hide the complexity of the different kind of areas of the of the text of the of the poster. And also not only do I have all the visibility icons of each of the different layers, but if I want to turn off the visibility of the whole group, I can do that because it also has an eyeball beside it as well. And you'll notice throughout this project that that's a common pattern that I'm going to use again and again. I'm going to add in layers, and once I've got a critical mass of a particular group, I'm going to add in a group and add all of those layers that I'm just after creating to that group and rename the group. So the next piece of text that I'm going to deal with is just the title of the concert or the subtext to do with the concert. So again, I'm going to take my text tool, and I'm going to type something on here. The actual piece that this... Uh, orchestra is performing is called Requiem. And so I've added in Requiem there. I'm going to grow that text. A little bit too big, so I'll bring that back a little bit and uh, move it into place. I'm also going to change the font face to a font face called Trajan Pro. And there it is, and I'm going to change the color back to white. That's fine. And I'm going to take the point size down to something a little bit more manageable. That's fine. I might put, just put quotes in that as well. And that looks nice. Great. Position that into the place that I want it. Okay. And that's a text layer. I want some kind of surtitle over that as well. So again, I'm going to take my text tool and I'm going to place a piece of text over that. So, Birdie's Choral Masterpiece. And again, that text has gone way too wide there, but it's just a matter of resizing that down. And changing the font size. And changing the uh, text font face. Something like that is okay. And because that text is slightly less important than the actual title of the piece, I'm also going to change the color of that text. So change it to something just a little bit off white. That's good. And again, because those two layers are related to one another, uh, I'm going to add them both into their own group. So that goes in there, that goes in below, and I'm going to rename that as concert subtitle, or simply subtitle. And generally with these layers and the groups of different layers, I generally try and organize them from the top down as I see them. It just makes them a lot easier to find if I organize them that way. So because my concert brand is up above concert subtitle, I'll reorganize those so that's the way it will look. Uh, so I'll just drag that down there. And also all of the layers inside, Verdi is over 200, that's fine. And in my concert subtitle, Verdi's Choral Masterpiece is above Requiem, so that's good as well.
And I keep on going with all the different texts and in the meantime I've just kind of time-lapsed this recording and I've just put in another folder of different uh, texts here. So even in this event details, I've got the actual details, the time, the date, the location, but also some of the different choirs as well that's uh, occurring in this concert. And so all of those different things, uh, I can put them all into one folder called event details. The other great thing about grouping different layers is that they can all move together as well. I just have to select the actual group and everything moves in tandem with one another. And let me time lapse some more and add in some extra text. And I'll add in two extra groups. One of them is Web Info, which is just the website addresses of this uh, orchestra. And again, they're in a group all to themselves. Again, they adhere to that uh, ordering guideline that I gave you earlier on because they're towards the bottom of the poster. Well, I've ordered them downwards a little bit. And then also I've got the prices here as well. So the prices are on a separate group of text layers. And I've labeled the prices. Now, between web info and prices, because they're on the same level, which goes first in the ordering of my layers? Well, generally in the Western world, we read from top down and left to right. So, because the web info comes first on the left, uh, that will become first on the layer as well. And prices is to the right, so it goes down underneath that. And again, that's just a guideline just to help you find your layers easily and quickly when you've got a project with lots of different layers uh, that we see here in the layers window. If I look closely at my web information and also my prices information here, they're kind of getting lost in the details of the background of Verdi's jacket here. Up in the other kind of text, because they're on a kind of a more uniform background, they're easier to read, but this text is a lot smaller and is just getting lost in this busy background. So to help with the visibility of those smaller pieces of information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an extra layer. And I am just going to fill a particular area using my marquee tool uh, and the paint bucket tool. I'm just going to fill that with black. Uh, rather than just have it plain black, although I could leave it that way as well, it would be fine, but I'm just going to change the opacity of that layer and bring it down a little bit and I'll still see some of Verdi shining through there. That just makes that whole smaller text information here a lot easier to read. There are two final sets of objects that I have to add into this poster. One of them is to do with sponsors logos and I'm going to fit them down here in the bottom but also the actual overall logo of the orchestra. I have to bring that in as well. So again I'm going to bring these in as a group and if I'm just going to time lapse it a little bit. And here they are. So I've got the sponsors logos. So there's three different images in there. I've put them all into different layers and I've grouped them together in a group called sponsors logos. And again, because they're all in one group, I can move them all together now at this stage. And I'll tidy up that later on. And then just to focus on my orchestra logo, uh, that's right up at the top. So again, all things being equal, as long as I didn't have to kind of layer things around, uh, if it's all text layers, I will pull that up the top because it's towards the top of the uh, of the poster so that will make it easier for me to find. Uh, I think we're going to have to do something with this Verdi because the Wexford Sinfonia logo is getting a little bit lost. I'm just going to move it slightly over to the left but I think the Verdi uh, logo, the concert branding is just a little bit too big so I'm just going to need to bring that down a tiny little bit so I'll just change the sizing there and that will be fine. Okay, now uh, the last thing I have to do here is with the web logo, web info, I need to move that up a little bit, let that breathe a little bit away from those sponsors logos as well. The last thing that I want to deal with as well is the alignment of these different pieces of text on this poster. Uh, especially over on this edge, what I would like to have is the edge of that I of Verdi, uh, the M of Requiem, and all of these other pieces of text, they're all right aligned. They should really align with each other. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go to the view menu and go to new guide. New guide in a vertical position will draw on this new guide. All of this, these guides in Photoshop too is allows me to align things easily by line of sight. And so I can go up to my layers window, find the different layers and questions, put on the move tool and line them up to that guide. I'm happy with the requiem, just maybe the aim it could be a little bit over to the a little bit more to the center. Some of these different uh, pieces of text we can cheat a little bit. You don't have to align exactly the edge of the different uh, layers. But M can just go over that a little bit. All of these are fine and the ticket information, uh, the prices layer, I can move that slightly 
to the left. But in general, that's a guide of how to do a poster in Photoshop.